All right, coming up, reports tell us the White House knew within 24 hours of the Libya attack that it could have been an act of terror. So why didn't they just say so? And what does this say about the administration's political ambitions? All right, thanks so much, Allison. Well, the big story making headlines this morning, again, several days after the attack on the U.S. consulate. This was the story that the Obama administration was sticking to. Listen. This was not a pre-planned, premeditated uh, attack. That what happened initially was that it was a spontaneous uh, reaction to what had just transpired in Cairo uh, as a consequence of the video. Our current assessment is that what happened in Benghazi was in fact initially a spontaneous uh, reaction. What our assessment is as of the present is in fact what it began spontaneously in Benghazi uh, as a reaction to what had transpired some hours earlier in Cairo. But as Fox News reports, the administration knew within the first 24 hours that it was a terrorist attack. So why were Americans left in the dark and how could a potential cover up impact the election? Here for a fair and balanced debate is Fox News contributor Angela McGlowan and liberal radio talk show host Mark Levine. Mark, let me start with you. This seems like a big problem for the president. I don't see it that way. Look, the president came out the morning after the attacks on September 12th, came out in the Rose Garden, told Americans these were acts of terror and promised to punish the perpetrators, and I have no doubt we will. It does take time to put all this intelligence together. We now know or appear to believe that it was a local Libyan militia named Ansar al-Sharia that basically opportunistically hijacked the ongoing spontaneous protest. The Washington Post reported that it took seven hours after the protests and the attacks began for them to go home get their mortars and use them to firebomb the consulate. So the, what intelligence analysts believe now is that they cased the joint. It was a pre-planned attack, but maybe the day wasn't pre-planned. So it did begin as a spontaneous protest. Then they came in, hijacked it, and, and killed but those Mark, American heroes. Is that the wash, administration Angela? was lock in step with their statement. You had Hillary Clinton that came out. You had our U.N. ambassador that came out. You had Jay Carney, the, the White House press secretary, saying, in essence, that this attack was spontaneous and and it was because of an anti-Muslim video. Now we know to the contrary, and I'm so delighted that John Kerry, even though he's working with Obama on his debates, is actually going to lead an investigation to actually see what happened. We need to know what the White House knew well, and why we did not beef up security at our embassies. And the fact that a film came out in January, this anti-Muslim film came out in January, we use that Mark, to blame the uh, attacks in Benghazi. Mark, and where, what, why the disconnect, though, when Fox News reporting 24 hours afterwards and our sources confirming that? And then, to my mind, I'm looking at the calendar here, September 11th, and then f nearly five days later, you have uh, you have uh, uh, Secretary Rice up on the, the Sunday talk shows on five different shows vociferously defending this, Mark. Well, again, the President of the United States, within 24 hours, called this an act of terror. So we knew it was a terrorist attack, but we didn't know exactly <laughs> who did it and whether it was planned. And it turns out that, again, the terrorists saw this spontaneous uh, a protest against the, the video, the despicable video. They ran home. They got their mortars. It was only seven hours after there were gun battles, after the attacks we, began, we, that they used those mortars. Angela, so, will this be a problem for the president come to the debate? The foreign is policy going, is up in the yes. first in the debates. Yes, and I believe that this is going to be a problem. And as Ben Stein said and others, this could be worse than Watergate for the Obama administration. But the problem is, will the mainstream media actually report it? So people need to tune in to the debates, and Mitt Romney needs to to hold Obama's feet to the fire. Mark, final word on the debate. Will it be a problem for the president? I don't think so. I think Americans want a president who waits till he has all the facts before he accuses people. You know, Mitt Romney came out on September 11th, broke the embargo about politicking on September 11th, <laughs> and used it claiming Obama sympathized oh, so with he terrorists. Spiked the football. Okay. This president, mm -hmm. this president waited, and I think he's well, right to wait till he had all the facts. Well, we'll see how this plays out in the debates coming up. Not too much longer to wait. Mark and Angela, great to see both of you this morning. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having us. Thank you, us. Clayton. Now this debate coming up is spanking. Uh, we start with what's being now labeled as Benghazi Gate for the Obama administration, the evolution of what might be the truth of what happened regarding the killing of Ambassador Chris Stevens and three others at the consulate there in Libya. Now the director of national intelligence is weighing in. Is he giving cover to Susan Rice? 
for the administration's wobbling evolution on the truth. Well, we may see how this argument's now about to play out, right? We had a debate on the show just a little while ago. Fascinating, because I was hearing from Mark Levine, who's a liberal talk show host, maybe the argument from the left, which is that this intelligence may have been muddled from the beginning, and they were making their way to uncover it. This is what the director of national intelligence is now saying it was on us, basically, not the White House. Read this. In the immediate aftermath, there was information that led us to assess that the attack began spontaneously spontaneously following protests earlier that day at our embassy in Cairo. We provided that initial assessment to the White House officials and members of Congress who used that information to discuss the attack publicly and provide updates as they became available. Throughout our investigation, we continued to emphasize that information gathered was preliminary and evolving. And the White House came out the president, within 24 hours or so, and said it was a terrorist attack. But then you had Susan Rice coming out five days later, even on the Sunday talk show, saying it was spontaneous. So there's a disconnect. Related to this uh, anti-Muhammad uh, film, Prophet right. Muhammad right. film, of course. I don't know what's worse. I don't know what's worse, it, whether the administration intentionally misled the American public as the critics charge for political reasons, or whether this was a massive intelligence failure that our intelligence officers either cannot get access to Benghazi or don't have the tools or resources to find out what was really happening on the ground. Because, by the way, witnesses said it right away. Witnesses said it. The president of Libya said it. People there knew that this was a terrorist attack and right, right guys, away. Why didn't our intelligence And right, officers? guys, Fox News confirmed it within right. 24 saying, hours. Catherine Herridge has confirmed that within 24 hours it was being labeled that and even being labeled something that related to an offshoot of al-Qaeda. So I agree with you. I don't think this covers Susan Rice or the administration at all. We already knew they evolved. The question is why.